Hello everybody, this is Patrick Smith here once again at the 4th Annual West Virginia Game Developers Expo 2019 and I'm here with a group of students who've made a fantastic VR game and they currently attend the Tri-State STEM Plus M School over in Ohio. How are you all doing today? We're good, thank you. So tell me, I know each of you all had a part to play in this game, tell me the genesis of your all's underwater VR game. So our project started about three years ago and it was really to combine a lot of different interests that the students had. So I'm a project manager and I'll pass it along to some of the other roles, but I kind of tried to get everyone together and delegate the roles that everyone needed to do. So we talked about assignments we needed to have and deadlines to complete certain models. And then we really just created this game from scratch and went with the flow and we've really created a good product from these past three years. So I, I would say right now, like where who was the person that said, you know what, let's let's make a game for that matter? How did I'm that gonna start? I'm going to pass it off to Michaela. Oh, okay, okay, one. great. Okay, so hi, my name is Michaela Cassidy. I'm the head researcher. So, um, as you said, I go to the STEM school, which uh -huh. is very project-based, and they really want to get us out there in the job field. But for me, I'm an aspiring marine veterinarian, and where I live in Ohio, that's not really anything I can do. I sure. can't get out there. So we had to get really creative with what I was going to do. So um, at the time, the head of the school sat down with me, and they said, we need to think of things that we can do. We need to brainstorm. And they said, it's kind of hard to cater to just one person because I'm the only one in my school that wants to do this. Sure. So they said, well, what are other things that we can do? And it just kind of was thrown out there as they said, what if we made a game with this? Because we have a lot of people who want to go into programming and a lot of people that want to go in that kind of field. So they said, what if we just completely put the oddball in with everyone else? And they came up with this idea. They said, just take it from here. So we um, decided the Mariana's Trench and I did all of the research. And then I met with all the programmers and modelers to make this. Well, and that really helps a lot of times because you've got programmers who are like, I want to make a game, but I need someone to help me with a story. And suddenly yeah. you supply the content that totally led right into a story, and, and that's going to help them as well. So let's, let's talk about the actual programming of the game. Who started doing the programming of the game, and why did you all make it in Unity? Like, tell me about the, the design decisions in the beginning you all had for this game. So when we so when we started making the game, we had we started with a mentor we had from WVU. Uh huh. So we had the idea that it was going to be a VR game, and he personally recommended that we use Unity for for a VR game. So okay. It's easily compatible with Steam VR. Uh huh. So we also chose the HTC Vive because of that. Okay. I also feel like Unity. Did Unity cost you all anything? Because that's that's another benefit I believe. It like, is for that. free. Yes. Oh, that so that that works out you as well. You only pay money. For for publishing licenses. Oh, yeah, for sure. commercial stuff. Yes. Okay. So had you had any personal uh, experience doing programming in Unity? Yes, it was, um, it's something I did for, just for fun a few years before. Uh -huh. There's no purpose for it. I just right. like doing it. Mm -hmm. And I kind of threw around the idea that maybe I can make a game. And before this, it was just kind of something that I didn't make much of because... It's a bit disorganized, so I was kind of just doing it because. Sure. Yeah. But with this project, we actually had an end goal in mind and a lot of our people to help with the process. So I'm just, I'm curious, compared to a regular game, did making a VR game, did that make you have to think differently? Well, one of the things is a lot of things in Unity that are pretty easy to do are not as easy to do when you apply in a VR setting. First of all, you have to get the camera worked out, and luckily our mentor recommended us a, thing, <laughs> a specific asset on the marketplace that could help with that. But there's still some things to work out, like movement is a lot more disorienting, to say the least. Oh, sure. And with UI elements, there's also a few compa compatibility errors and whatnot. Okay. So you all had a topic for a game, you all had uh, a game engine you were going to use. You went with the idea of VR. Um, what were what were the next steps at that point? So some of our next steps were um, Michaela's side of it was researching what fish exactly we needed to put into it. 
because we wanted to make it realistic, but also there's not a large amount of research on the Marianas Trench, so we were trying to make it as accurate as possible. Okay. And we also had to storyboard a little bit, kind of decide what we really wanted the game to be like. And then we had to recruit more people onto the team, such as business people, more graphic designers, and we started bringing up people from like freshmen and sophomores to help us too. Um, and that's we're still in the process of doing that and adding more models and programming more things into the game. Okay. Um, I'm curious, M Michaela, you talked about the research you were doing. Um, w with you and the designers, did the designers come to you and say, okay, if we're making a VR game, we have to have an objective. So what is it you can supply us from your research that gives you an objective of a collectible, for example, or something like that? Did you have to suddenly start to think about your your content area as how it could be gamified, I, I guess I'm saying? Um, so really what kind of happened was we knew we wanted it to be educational. Uh -huh. And it was really hard because, as Bella said, it was... Um, it's not very researched. So really, um, all the game model people came up to me and they had kind of this idea for the research program. So we're adding that in right now okay. to where the game base we're thinking is kind of like you're part of a research program and you're researching all these different types of fish. So that comes into why the facts are popping up and those will help you throughout the game. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, I know, thinking back, I, I did a... I did a program once called Global Aurea where we, we helped the high school students make games. I, I feel like I remember at some point <clears throat> someone making a game where um, if, if they're, I don't believe, I think it was in the jungle, but they were getting facts based on taking photographs of the, of the things. And when I saw your all's game and you were just talking about that, potentially if you wanted to add some gamification, if, if there's a, a fish that's very, very wily and it, it hides, if, if you had like an underwater camera and the more pictures you took of it, the more facts you could get, you could develop a, a better picture about it, know where it's going to be and that type of stuff. So there's all kinds of cool aspects you can go on this. That's fantastic. If people want to find out more about your all's games, um, I believe you all have an email and, a, and an Instagram, is that right? So our Instagram, oh, sorry, our Instagram is stem underscore VR dot official. Mm -hmm. And our email is stem m dot deep VR at gmail. Okay, fantastic. Do you all know anything else you'd want to tell anybody out there about your all's game or the project or, or even the STEM school? Um, kind of, I'll talk about the STEM school for a little sure. bit. So we have students from West Virginia, Kentucky, and Ohio. So that was really good because we got a lot of different aspects and a lot more people had the opportunities to learn differently. And we do a lot of projects, as Michaela said, and every week we have a meeting on Wednesdays specifically, and we also have a dedicated class period once a week so that we can all meet and discuss what we've been doing. And I'll pass it off to Andrew, actually. He's a freshman, and he's learning the ropes a little bit. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so um, we don't actually have a teacher that helps us to like understand how to program or use Blender, which is a, a 3D modeling software. So it's all completely self... Um, self-taught. Yes, self yeah, we're completely self-taught. Um, and as a freshman, I just joined this year. It's also my first year at the school because it's a high school. It's only a high school. Mm -hmm. um, so I came in and I joined the VR program and I've just started learning and I've had um, some help from some of the fresh or first from some of the upperclassmen but it's been mostly self-taught and it's been really nice. So what aspect are you doing the blender aspect you doing like um, the animals I've and stuff? I've been uh, recently focused on the 3D modeling of most of the creatures and things like that yeah. Okay okay cool. But I'm also interested in the, in the programming aspect. Okay Okay, and so the, the, another good thing is that for people out there that don't know, Unity is free, and then also Blender is free, and so they work they work well together. Yeah, so, if anybody out here is watching this and like, hey, I'd like to try to make my own VR game, at this point, you all needed to have some sort of computer system to run it, but but the tools you all were using were free, correct? So yes. Blender and Unity. So it's it's not an it's not unheard of that somebody at their house could could decide, hey, I want to try to make a VR game, and and they could do it with at least having a computer, but other than that, yeah, not absolutely. a lot of extra money that involved. I may note that I'm pretty sure that Blender is actually 100% free. It's uh -huh. open source, yeah. so I don't think there's any like licensing involved. Yeah, even if you use Blender, you're saying if you sell the product, there's no, they, no they don't make you license it. Yeah, okay. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you all so much for talking about your all's project you all have and talking about the school. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.